Hello and welcome back to the waters. Let's try and buy something to eat. Rap analysis complete. Multiple taxonomy entries updated. Analysis of the unique chemical compounds found in the salt spores and a wider understanding of how stocks are used for to communicate suggest a more mutual relationship between spore catchers and stocks than initially assumed. If stocks are able to tailor the chemical makeup of the spores, it is possible that the select spores that the catchers eat are intended for their consumption and contain compounds and minerals attractive to hit these species. As spore cutters use their color shifting properties to hide among stock colonies, it seems increasingly possible that stock colonies and spore cutters are mutualistically linked and cutters serve the needs of specific stock patches. What those needs are, however, is not yet clear. Analysis of a spore cutter egg, if found, may help us gain a true picture of their physiology. Analysis of stock bark shows that it is hidden base as suspected, containing glucose and high levels of polysaccharides. It makes it an ideal food source for the scrapers. But not only this, it makes stock membrane a vital substance for lichen scraper shell formation. The more stock membrane consumed, the larger and thicker a scraper shell will become, which explains the variance in the scraper shell size and translucency. Going further, shells may also be markers of a stock scraper's importance within the community. A larger shell means a more effective grazer, and therefore a more preferable partner. Further analysis of scraper shells is needed to continue this line of inquiry. Analysis of stock spores has revealed a rich cocktail of compounds unique to each spore, some of which are previously unknown to human chemistry. This aspect of the spores and the noticeable exchange between colonies of stuff suggests that these chemical cocktails are part of an information exchange network. However, some of these spores also appear to be true spores, used for the asexual reduction of stock colonies, suggesting that the information carrying spores are adapted or modified to productive spores. Analysis also suggests that stock colonies may possess a high level of intelligence and cognition and that the messaging provided by the spores is nuanced and even subjectively unique to each colony. Partners across multiple spores from a single colony even suggest a chemical signature process by each stock group. Could this be thought of a stock names? Analysis of the stock bark sample has given some new in insights into the same stocks. Their entire biology is compressed into the kitten place that surround each specimen. They're completely hollow. In fact, rather than being a single large stalk, sink stalks are actually many spirally entwined stalks, which weave together to form a pillow like shell. The scraping of these stalks as they move may not be a form of communication with other colonies as first thought and instead a kind of internal metronome there to synchronize the movements of each individual stock within the wave of stocks. But if the signaling signal stocks are the bark that surrounds them, this brings with it a new question. What the signal stock contain for the analysis is needed? Signals Shrill sac Rabola tree analysis show that they are formed from a coating of muc mucus sealed around a pressurized mix of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The oxygen shows that the signal stocks are able to absorb oxygen from their surroundings, perhaps through their large pores? Meanwhile, the CO2 must be the result of a fermentation process within the stock itself. This suggests the presence of a fungal symbiote similar to yeast within the stock, and the possible production of ethanol as a byproduct of this process, though a tissue sample would be necessary to confirm this. True sarc production, meanwhile, seems to be a precise art. The pressurization, gas mix, and size of each shrill sac can differ from stock to stock, 
meaning that warnings can be directed to particular callings and even individual stocks within the society. So oh, we can take those back. Bring this in our quest. Yeah. Maybe more. Very fast. This is where we need to go. Signal priority. The base has detected a suit transporter at these coordinates. Could this be now? We'll have to head into the east field to find out. Sample request spore cutter. Obstruction. Minas knows mentioned something called the bloom across the swift. We won't be able to cross it. We need to go to the west and then to the south get both samples we can go over there the pale sun is only moving here but to the north I can see the only cars and strong currents of the white rift be able to go there. The central leafway station lies within a bubble of calm, but just to its north, a massive fear of wind strong currents for the wave. Outside of the shimmering perimeter of the western stock forest, almost nothing lies or grow on the west finger of the reef. Passage between these rocks leads out into the howling currents of the northern rift, which we don't want to go yet. We want somewhere here. This western side of the finger becomes increasingly enclosed by rocky outcrops as it leads towards the shallow water. Some ruined equipment lies in the shelter of two boulders, an early way station site, perhaps? Across the open sun, I can see the faint shape of stock coins rising up in ordered rows. At the edge of the strange terraces of this underwater forest, the stock suits like a century armed with a coating of bubbles. First, I do need this one. We have one. Yeah, we might need it. In case we need to get full. Patterns of stalks stretch back into the distance, pathways and terraces of some unknown design. This might be the western stalk forest. <laughs> Unlike in Sutter Reef, the stalks here are ordered in curving rows, tightly packed and evenly spaced. These stalks bulge out from the bases, forming rounded pools in groves that look discolored and stretched. I've started logging data on these strange inflated stalks. They look ill. This growth is bloated and distant, the, the panels of the kitten bulging outwards, and between the seams something flows within. Rich in fuel. Toxic microbial colony found inside both stalks. 
To the west, the stalks spread in thick pathways, moving between strangely corroded stones. Another of the reefs tall stones dotted with translucent bubbles. These curving avenues of stalks seem to mark a loose planet around each bloated floor. Why? Of these stalks is thin enough to be translucent in areas stretched to baking point by whatever is inside. This pulsing growth sits in a strangely shaped clearing. What causes the stalks to grow like this? There's something I'm not seeing here. Stalks is a difficult task, and I hope that the reaction is temporary and not some terminal state. These bubble skin stalks keep their distance from the bolts as if they know the danger they pose to stalk opponents. The stalks seem to be precisely spaced out between the stalks. Are we damaging the scrum by disturbing them? Some vein or root must run through the spot as the sound rumbles with unseen movements. Are all the bolts connected? These stalks burst open, releasing their toxic contents into the local water. Could they be defending themselves? It seems unlikely that the bloats are simply individually busy stalks. Their growth patterns suggest a system of process. If it's chalky covering milk, away by the bloat. This rock has a dull metallic sheen, spectrum of light reflecting across its surface. The pulsing, pumping rhythm of these stalks contraction suggests that some process is happening inside them. Great, now we have plenty of these microbial colonies. But we need to get on with finding that soup transponder. Let's head to the East Reef. Beyond these stalks, I can see a sheer ridge rising up to the north. North of here, an angular ridge ascends. Cutting the shelf in two. The only way for the north is to cross the rift to the east of here. Duck into the side of this crowded rock, a pile of stones with worn holes set in the sand, leaving a hole something glitters. Uh. 
あでもアンドストーストークプレイヤーズオブデフィクトルスラウンドメイズオブロックスロッキングデフェンスラウンドイースThese dogs are isolating the rules, but it is because you are dangerous, the clone will tell. Large dogs dogs have burst easily its own dogs and microbes held inside the bodies they smooth and suggest unseen processes. That's enough data to log and classify these infected dogs and don't call them rift dogs. Go back or do that. That's reassuring. That's the coolest retrieval. Let's go back to our base.
Analysis of the spore cutter egg shows a strong correlation between the minerals it contains and the minerals present within the cutter's favorite spores. It seems that through the spores, stocks are able to affect the cutter's egg production, therefore controlling the volume, shape and behavior of cutters within any area of the reef. In a sense, the stocks have domesticated the cutters, leaving the two interestingly linked as species. But the question of what the cutters provide the stocks remains. Do cutters serve a specific purpose, consuming unwanted or incorrectly configured spores, for example, or are they kept for other reasons? Could the cutter be kept by the stocks for their companionship and social use, just as humans keep pets? Reef blows are large bloated stocks that can be found at the western blow border of the reef. Intimidating in their size and distorted shape, they resemble inflated sporing mushrooms covered in nodules of our unplanned fungal growth. The membrane, which is stretched by the bloating process to an almost translucent sheen, is darker than a typical stalk, making the stalks themselves a shade of sickly orange. What role the bloats play in the reef's stalk network is not immediately obvious, but their pulsing pumping motion such as that the blows are either processing or producing the toxic microbes that are contained within their further membranes. Without analyzing the microbial colonies themselves, this will be difficult to assert. assert Laboratory analysis of the microbial colonies found within reef blows, spark colonies as I have come to call them, show that these microbes are not of a group typically associated with salt colonies. In fact, spark colonies appear to be made up of highly modified algae, with a wide metabolic range able to consume carbon dioxide, oxygen, metal and toxin compounds with equal porosity when supplied with a source of light. When metabolizing these substances, spark colonies produce a regular flow of charged electrons, making them ideal for use within a microbial fuel cell or MFC. Their suitability for this use is suspicious. Are these really naturally occurring microbes? And why are they found only within reef blows? Something isn't right here. And I think this is where we're gonna end this part here. So for now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!